Welcome back to our IB Biology video series. This is the third video in IB Biology Topic 6, Human Physiology, where we will be looking at defence against infectious disease, including the immune system, HIV and antibiotics. Before outlining the immune system, it is first necessary to define an important term used in this context, a pathogen. A pathogen is simply an organism capable of causing disease. Each pathogen is unique, as identified by proteins on its surface known as antigens. The immune system is a term given to the body structures and mechanisms that prevent a pathogen from causing such disease. This is divided into three components. The primary defence, non-specific immunity and specific immunity. The key structures that comprise the primary defence system are the skin, tears, the respiratory tract, the stomach, the large intestine and the bladder. The skin is a thick outer layer that forms a physical barrier against pathogen entry. It contains sebaceous glands that secrete lactic acid and fatty acids to also prevent bacterial growth. Tears wash away irritants and microbes and contain lysosome, an enzyme that kills bacteria. The respiratory tract contains moist mucous membranes which trap pathogens and contain lysosome. In addition, these membranes are lined with ciliated cells, which have extensions called cilia on their surface which sweep away microbes. The stomach contains hydrochloric acid, which kills pathogens. The large intestine contains native bacteria, i.e. commensal bacteria, which outcompete pathogens for resources. And the bladder contains urea, which washes away microbes from the urethra. However, these structures are not flawless. So, to help the immune system prevent pathogen entry, a specific set of chemical reactions occur in the presence of a cut or tear in the skin. These stages are referred to as the clotting cascade, and you need to recall them. Let's look at it now. A cut or tear to the skin causes injury to an underlying blood vessel, exposing collagen fibres. Platelets within the blood stick to these fibres, releasing chemicals known as clotting factors. These are procoagulant, i.e. attract further platelets to the site of injury. This forms an emergency barrier to prevent blood loss. Further chemical changes then lead to the release of thromboplastin, a chemical which activates a protein within the blood known as prothrombin into another known as thrombin. Thrombin can then convert another inactive soluble protein within the blood known as fibrinogen into its active and insoluble form, known as fibrin. Fibrin production forms a network of fibres, known as a clot. This clot prevents further blood loss and dries to form a scab, preventing pathogen entry. However, even the fallback clotting cascade has its imperfections. So, what happens if a pathogen evades the barrier protection component of the immune system? Well, this is where white blood cells are fundamental. These are specific cells in the blood that carry out the chemical processes of the immune system. There are many subtypes, but for your IB biology exam, you need to recall two, phagocytes and lymphocytes. Phagocytes are large cells with a large cytoplasm and a multi-lobed nucleus. Lymphocytes are large cells with a large round nucleus and little cytoplasm. They can be either B or T cells. White blood cells carry out two processes known as the non-specific and specific immune responses. You may also hear these referred to as the innate or primary and adaptive or secondary immune responses respectively. Let's look at each white blood cell separately. Phagocytes, also called macrophages, recognize antigens on the surface of the pathogen and detect it as non-self. They then engulf the pathogen by surrounding it with pseudopods and carrying out endocytosis. Once ingested, the pathogen merges with a lysosome to form a structure known as a phagolysosome, where digestive enzymes break the pathogen down. 
the digested products are then removed by exocytosis. This process is known as phagocytosis and is described as innate, i.e. present from birth, and non-specific, as the response of a macrophage to any antigen is always phagocytosis. Lymphocytes also recognize antigens and can also receive signals directly from macrophages. In either case, they produce small proteins known as antibodies, which bind to antigens and aid the destruction of pathogens through several mechanisms. This process is described as adaptive, i.e. learnt throughout life, and specific, as the antibodies produced are unique to the antigen encountered. It is worth noting that for those of you studying IB biology higher level, we will cover pathogens and the innate and adaptive immune response in greater depth within our topic 11 IB biology video series. However, for now, a particular pathogen of focus for your syllabus is human immunodeficiency virus. You've now reached the end of the preview for this IB science video. If you want to check out the full video, head over to our website and select a membership plan today.